Hello and welcome to Knowledge Park. Have you ever stopped to think about the miracle of movement? How you can blink your eyes, run for a bus, or even feel your heartbeat without conscious thought? Today, we're exploring the incredible system that makes all this possible, the human muscular system. We'll cover the different types of muscles and their functions. We'll also explore the fascinating science of how muscles contract. We'll discuss common disorders and the latest research in muscular health. And you'll learn practical ways to keep your muscles healthy. Nutrition, breathing, and exercise. We'll also cover when to seek medical help and which specialists to consult. Whether you're a student, healthcare professional, or simply curious, this video will give you valuable insights. Let's begin our journey, our before we dive deep, let's first understand the layout of our muscular system. Imagine your body as a vast and intricate country, and your muscles as its major states and cities. To explore this territory, we need a map. Let's start at the top, the head and neck muscles, muscles of facial expression. Examples, smile or frown, the masseter muscle, chewing. Next, the core muscles, the central pillar, pectorals in the chest, abdominals across the belly, latissimus dorsi, erector spinae, all working together to provide stability and strength. Now the upper limb muscles, deltoids, shoulders, biceps, bend the elbow, triceps, straighten the elbow, forearm muscles, grip control, hand muscles, precision. Finally, the lower limb muscles, the engines of movement, gluteals, power the hips, quadriceps, front of the thigh, hamstrings, back of the thigh, gastrocnemius, soleus. They support every step, jump, and sprint. By mapping these regions, you'll see how each group contributes to your body's abilities. Let's continue and discover what lies beneath the surface. Many people think muscles are just for movement, but our muscular system is far more sophisticated. We have not one, but three distinct types of muscle tissue, each with specialized structures and functions. Let me introduce you to these three types. First, skeletal muscle, the ones we typically think about. Second, smooth muscle, found in our internal organs. And third, cardiac muscle, the powerful pump in our chest. Skeletal muscles are attached to our bones by tendons and are under our voluntary control. When you decide to wave at a friend, your brain sends signals through nerves to specific skeletal muscles to make that happen. Under the microscope, skeletal muscle shows a striped or striated pattern. This comes from how proteins are organized within the muscle cells. These muscles are composed of many parallel fibers bundled together by connective tissue. Beyond movement, skeletal muscles maintain our posture, stabilize our joints, and produce heat to maintain body temperature. In fact, about 85% of our body heat comes from muscle contractions. Now let's talk about smooth muscle, the involuntary worker that never rests. You'll find this type in the walls of your hollow organs like stomach, intestines, blood vessels, and bladder. Unlike skeletal muscle, smooth muscle isn't under our conscious control. It works automatically to move food through your digestive system, regulate blood pressure by changing blood vessel diameter, and empty your bladder. Structurally, Smooth muscle cells are spindle-shaped and arranged in sheets. They contract more slowly than skeletal muscle, but can maintain contractions for much longer without tiring, essential for functions like sustaining blood pressure. Now, meet the most dedicated muscle in your body, cardiac muscle. Found only in the heart, this remarkable tissue works tirelessly from before birth until our final moments. Cardiac muscle shares some characteristics with both skeletal and smooth muscle. Like skeletal muscle, it's striated. Like smooth muscle, it's involuntary. But it has unique features called intercalated discs that allow heart cells to coordinate contractions perfectly. Think of cardiac muscle as nature's perfect pump. It contracts rhythmically about 100,000 times a day, pumping blood throughout your entire body. Now that we've met the different muscle types, let's explore how they actually work. The process is truly remarkable, especially in skeletal muscle, where scientists understand it best. Imagine you're standing between two heavy bookcases on wheels. You pull them toward you by repeatedly grabbing two ropes and hand over hand pulling them in. 
This is essentially what happens in your muscles. In this analogy, the bookcases are the Z-discs that form the ends of sarcomas, the basic units of muscle. The ropes are actin filaments, the thin proteins. Your arms are myosin filaments, the thick proteins that walk along the actin. As myosin heads repeatedly attach, pull and detach from actin, they pull the actin filaments inward, shortening the muscle. This is the core of the sliding filament theory of muscle contraction. Let's look closer at this molecular dance. Step 1. The myosin head is energized by ATP. Step 2. It binds to actin, forming a cross bridge. Step 3. The power stroke occurs. Myosin pulls actin. Step 4. A new ATP molecule binds, causing detachment. Then the cycle repeats. This process requires energy and regulation. Calcium ions act as the on switch by moving regulatory proteins away from the binding sites. ATP provides the energy needed both for contraction and detachment. When we die and ATP production stops, myosin can't detach from actin. This causes rigor mortis. It's a sobering reminder of how crucial energy is for muscle function. Now that we understand how muscles work normally, let's discuss what happens when things go wrong. Muscle disorders range from common injuries to serious genetic conditions. Almost everyone has experienced a muscle strain, what we often call a pulled muscle. This happens when muscle fibers are stretched beyond their limit and tear. Think of it like an old bungee cord that's been overstretched. The individual fibers separate and tear. Common causes include overuse, improper lifting, or sudden exertion without warming up. Treatment usually follows the RICE method. Rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Most strains heal well with proper care, but severe tears may need medical attention. On the more serious end, we have muscular dystrophies, a group of genetic disorders characterized by progressive weakness and degeneration of skeletal muscles. In Duchenne muscular dystrophy, DMD, which primarily affects boys, the body can't produce a crucial protein called dystrophin. Without it, muscle cells become fragile and easily damaged. What many don't realize is that several forms of muscular dystrophy also affect cardiac muscle, causing cardiomyopathy. In fact, for some types like Becker muscular dystrophy, cardiac complications are a leading cause of death. The good news is that research is advancing rapidly. Scientists are making progress with gene therapies that could potentially correct the underlying genetic defects. Advanced imaging techniques like cardiovascular magnetic resonance, CMR, can now detect early heart involvement in muscular dystrophy patients even before symptoms appear, allowing earlier intervention. There's also growing interest in integrative approaches that combine modern medicine with traditional therapies, addressing the whole person rather than just the symptoms. Now for the practical part. How do we keep our muscles healthy throughout our lives? It comes down to three key elements, proper nutrition, appropriate exercise, and healthy habits. Let's start with nutrition. Your muscles need quality building materials, primarily protein, but also carbohydrates for energy and various vitamins and minerals. Excellent protein sources include eggs, which contain all essential amino acids and large amounts of leucine, salmon and fatty fish, providing protein plus anti-inflammatory omega-3s, Greek yogurt, offering a mix of fast and slow digesting proteins, and plant-based options like soybeans, quinoa, and various beans and legumes. For carbohydrates, focus on whole food sources like brown rice, quinoa, and sweet potatoes that provide sustained energy for your workouts and daily activities. Just as important is knowing what to limit. Highly processed meats high in saturated fats. Foods with trans fats like fried foods and many baked goods. Sugary snacks and beverages that provide empty calories. And excessive alcohol, which can impair muscle protein synthesis and recovery. Also be mindful of high-calorie dressings and sauces that can add excess calories without nutritional benefit. Now, let's talk about a surprisingly important muscle. Your diaphragm. 
Proper breathing is crucial for muscle health and overall well-being. Diaphragmatic breathing, or belly breathing, strengthens your diaphragm, decreases oxygen demand, and helps you relax. Here's how to do it. Lie on your back with knees bent. Place one hand on your chest, the other on your belly. Breathe in slowly through your nose, feeling your belly rise while your chest stays still. Tighten your stomach muscles as you exhale through pursed lips. For exercise, include both resistance training to build strength and cardiovascular exercise to improve blood flow to muscles. Remember to warm up properly and increase intensity gradually to prevent injuries. It's important to know when muscle symptoms need professional attention. While occasional soreness is normal, you should consult a healthcare provider if you experience muscle pain lasting more than a week, trouble moving or bearing weight, or sudden weakness, especially if it affects your balance. Seek immediate emergency care for sudden chest pain or heart attack symptoms, trouble breathing or swallowing, or severe pain, spasms, or weakness. For muscle-related issues, you might consult orthopedists for bone and joint-related muscle issues, neurologists for nerve-related muscle problems, cardiologists if there's heart muscle involvement, or physical therapists for rehabilitation. There's also growing availability of integrative medicine clinics that take a holistic approach to musculoskeletal health combining conventional treatments with complementary therapies. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the amazing world of your muscles. We hope you found this video helpful and empowering, whether you're caring for your own health or just curious about how your body works. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more insightful content on health science wellness. Your support helps us keep creating educational videos just for you Remember, your muscles do so much for you every day. Take care of them, stay curious, keep moving forward. See you in the next video.